Hey, what is up? Welcome back to Otaku. Back again. We're doing more Jump Tezuka manga reviews. This week, we are doing three more viewer submissions. We're going to be doing Back to Home. That's story by Dia and Amina B. And art just by Amina B. Ditch Dia for the art. Then we're going to move on to Spade. And that's by Tanuki Spade, I think. Then we're mm -hmm. going to do The Ideal Warrior to finish it off. And that's by Naman Agarwal. Uh, Agarwal? Agarwal? Those will be the three that we do this week. So all you can tell they're going to be good by the names of the authors. You just know. In case you guys don't know, the Tezuka Manga Contest, it's done. You missed it, but it's your chance to get a fuck ton of money, and you get to be serialized in Shonen Jump. And even better than really the money and the serialization, you can get your work read by some of the greatest of the greats. So it's worth entering next year, maybe. So let's go ahead and kick it off with Back to Home. That's mine. I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick summary. We'll discuss what we liked, what we didn't like, what we thought. And then we'll move on through all of them and pick a winner. So basically, to sum this one up, it's kind of like a, a sci-fi story that's been done quite a lot. We finally learned how, how to live out on Mars. And we joined the first human living on the planet. Her name is Sally. She has some serious uh, Earth blues. As it turns out, living on Mars isn't all she thought it would be. We see her looking for her memory box, or as uh, she refers to it as well, her time machine. Here we meet her tiny robot assistant, X1, who has taken care of all of the work so Sally can just rest, which seems like my type of guy. Sally shows X1 her memory box, which contains special childhood memories that her mom sent for her. She keeps referring to the uh, tenderness of these items, which, I don't know, is just a really weird to me. It's like, oh, I really like the tenderness. Would not describe memories as that. She tells X1 that she really misses humans, and she feels like she's lost her human characteristics because of her loneliness. X1 cheers her up, saying that she isn't alone, she has X1, which, you know, super fucking rude of her to even say that to begin with. They begin both preparing because not only she has X1, but her friends are coming to the station as well, so I don't think she's really ever been that lonely. They begin preparing for the arrival of her friends to the station. Sally is excited, hoping for uh, gifts uh, from her mother, when she refers specifically once again, more of mom's tender tenderness. I don't know what the fuck that means. She's looking for them chicken tendies. Chicken Seriously. tendies. Upon arrival, we meet Sally and Amjad. They brought supplies from Earth, which X1 immediately begins unloading. Sally wastes no time and asks for, or kind of more tells them that she wants to go back to Earth. Amjad and Maya both try to convince her to stay, saying that clearly the loneliness has had its effects on her, and this is just the consequence of living in isolation as you start to feel like that. But Sally isn't having any of it and just keeps pushing the issue. Eventually, Amjad... Let's loose that the planet Earth will no longer exist in just a few days. It will be completely eradicated. Bom. Apparently, I don't know how they were planning to do this. It was supposed to be a secret from Sally. So now Maya is mad at Amjad. And we get a flashback to three months ago uh, where Amjad first detected the object 2042 AA. He'd, it had changed its orbit during a collision. He showed the results of, its, of his study to the scientific community, but they told him just to keep observing it and let them know. Two weeks later, they found a possibility of it hitting Earth, but at that point, it was too late. They weren't prepared for deflection, and at this point, the debris uh, the debris that would be caused if they used nuclear explosives could be more dangerous than the actual thing itself, which I don't know how that would fucking work either. So they decided to take the most influential people and move them to Mars, as well as uh, wealthy ones and people related to the scientists. Sally is pissed about this because she doesn't want to sacrifice the lives of all the other people that are living on Earth. They all split their ways to kind of go cool off after getting into an argument. And after Sally does probably about a panel's worth of thinking, she decides, yeah, you know what? I'll go deal with the asteroid myself and then sneaks off. Which she immediately gets caught because uh, Amjad and Maya almost instantly piece together her plan when they see that the spacecraft's main gate opens. And so now, along with Sally having taken off in space, Amjad, Maya, and X1 are taking off after her to stop her from doing something stupid. With everyone in travel mode, we get some more flashbacks of a young Sally with her parents staring at the sky, and the uh, stupid dumb kid thinks the stars are going to fall and hit someone's head, which complete idiot. This is where she decides she wants to be a dangerous space object's crusher, but uh, that job doesn't exist, so she'll just go ahead and accept being an ast astronomer. Fast forward to her in school now, where they're talking about dreams. Here we see a young Amjad st stand up and proclaim that he wants to be an astronomer. Followed by Sally, saying that she does too, and he can't because that's her dream. And then followed by Maya, who says she wants to be one as well, and she'll be happy to work together with both of them. 
and thus that set the three of them off as a team ever since. Fast forward now two days left to get to the destination and we get to see planet Earth where uh, Sally's mom is getting a phone call. It's from Dr. Smith, who is Sally's supervisor, who is telling her that she needs to come to the Astronomical Center for reasons that he can't say and she needs to hurry. Unfortunately, once in the car, Sally's mom can't exactly make it very far because it's gridlock traffic. Turns out somebody leaked that the Earth was going to be destroyed, so all of the peasants who weren't selected to go to Mars are uh, rightfully pissed. Sally's mom eventually makes it to the gates. I don't know how. And that's where the guard informs her that even though she made it there, she's not allowed to enter because uh, the asteroid will crash in a few days. So now they're not letting anybody in there. And this is the first time her mom has heard the reasoning and she's shocked. Gotcha. <laughs> Back right. inside the Astronomical Center, they are now accepting the fate that uh, they're pretty much all going to die because they can't leave anywhere. And But, you know, hey, at least Amdrad and his team will carry on mankind for them. And then they look at the screen. It's like, oh, wait, there's two objects coming this way, and it's the Mark spacecrafts, the, the ones they used to get to Mars. Oh. So now we go back on board to Amdrad and Maya, who are trying to reason with Sally. But Sally's already decided that she will try to either deviate or destroy the asteroid. And if she fails to deviate it, she'll crush it with the spacecraft. She says one loss is nothing against billions, and then she disconnects from the comms. Amjad equips his space, space suit as they come closer to her, and they're chasing her, and leaves it to Maya to basically figure out a way to get her, uh, Sally out of the ship before the collision. X-1 hacks back into the comms, connecting Amjad and Maya, who finally convinces her to exit the spacecraft at just right before the time of the impact. Maya t chimes in here explaining to Sally that all she needs to do is switch the thruster propulsion from the antimatter to the ionic one to slow down, then trigger the annihilation reaction of, of the antimatter propulsion system inside the safety engine, then the storage system prevents the antimatter from being leaked, must be deactivated in order to have a chain of explosions, and then only then, with the energy released in addition to the shockwave, will it be enough to exterminate the asteroid, then... The only concern is them flying away as fast as possible to not be caught in the blast. Simple. Once done, then Maya basically shoots herself out of the ship. Amdra jumps out to catch her midair. Amdra grabs her hand, yells to Maya now. Maya hits the button, pulling them back in with two minutes left, and they begin to zoom away. Sally's ship then hits the asteroid, blowing up, sending debris flying everywhere. Inside the ship, everyone is celebrating. But what would you know? The spacecraft has all of a sudden lost balance due to a piece of debris hitting the craft. Unfortunately, they can't make it back to Mars, and they'll just have to go to Earth, which makes Sally look pretty sus at this point. They, <laughs> they do a nice safe crash landing on Earth as everyone is celebrating now that they're not going to actually fucking die due to the asteroid being destroyed. Sally gets out of the now-crashed spaceship, happy to feel the Earth's breeze once again, and she looks forward and sees her mom just hanging out there right in front of her. They hug. Sally says she missed her mom's tenderness, which once again is still fucking weird. <laughs> her mom asks if she will be going back to Mars, but Sally says no. From now on, she'll fly between Earth and Mars, protecting Earth from asteroids. Maya chimes in, saying not to worry because we'll be with her the whole time. And we get the final line from Sally chiming in to say, we are asteroid crushers. And that is the end. So Sally she set that whole fucking thing up to get them yep, all back to Earth. She created a job. Yeah. Yeah. She probably, you know, when it changed course all of a sudden, it was probably Sally. Sally probably yeah. sorted oh that out. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Little. Job security at its finest right there. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> now, not only does she get to have her cake and eat too, she gets to go to Earth, she gets to go to Mars, and she gets to destroy asteroids. She's basically created her dream. Well, yep. I'm curious as to, like, how often does this happen? You know, I've always said the phrase, like, you don't get rid of a fire extinguisher just because you haven't had a fire in a while, but is she planning on fucking just, it's a daily occurrence, the Earth is going to explode <laughs> from some fucking meteor? Well, there's sometimes where... They talk about asteroids where you you hear it in the news every once in a while. It's like, oh, there's an asteroid coming really close. There's an asteroid that yep. could, could happen. So maybe her job could be like when that's happening, she'll like guide the asteroid away just to 100% be certain. She'll and attach like a little rocket to it or something, mm -hmm. drill it into it, mm -hmm. and then just hit like a quick mm -hmm. little – Launch it's it going to be a very direction. expensive program if all she does mm. is eat her fucking spaceship into <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's actually all we know how to do. It's like we did, we could don't, the rocket thing Jose was talking about sounds like a great idea, but we actually just throw spaceships <laughs> into it and just blow it up. <laughs> I thought the, the, the little robot was going to sacrifice himself and like find a way. I was like, oh no. That oh, would be the one in no. on. Yeah. <laughs> well, that it's like, hurt. it makes me wonder if her literally just hitting the fucking thing with the spacecraft, why didn't they just blow it up? Uh, well, they brought up explosives. doing nuclear weapons. Yeah, but and they said would, the debris it, would be too much, but they just blow it yeah. up anyways. 
But I, I yeah, I don't, you know. Are they and it clearly shot the, debris uh, out because it hit the ship. Yeah. Are they talking but, more of like a nuclear kind of like radiation? But I will say the nuclear versus antimatter explosions are totally different. <laughs> they opened a oh, okay. fucking black hole, mm -hmm. a micro black hole on that motherfucker. So in reality, there shouldn't have been any fucking space debris shooting out. It well, if they have the tech to make that, why didn't they just shoot that shit out? Like straight yeah, up, call it Kamui. Like if that's already in the universe, just shoot one of them out there. And just call it a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, you like a Wait, yeah, why don't they have that. fucking antimatter cannons? Yeah, just, yeah, oh, just fucking blow no. the bastard right up. It's like, I mean, maybe now, maybe they never thought of it. It was like one of those things, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Now they know, and that's how Sally's gonna do it. She'll just go around uh, with her antimatter cannon and just blow up asteroids. I'm so Gurren Lagan. This is actually the prequel to the game Asteroids. So. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> crack the fuck up. <laughs> This is like Disney's <laughs> remake. Like, oh, did you know Asteroids has feelings? Mm -hmm. Oh, on the real though, the art was very good. In this, it was, uh, it was fantastic. Was yeah. Good. So, and I think it I, was a different language. It was originally written mm -hmm. in, but it was like really well translated for the most part. I feel like ninety percent of it was like easily readable. Yeah, a lot of what we've read ass. before has had that kind of problem. Where like you can kind of tell English isn't their first language. This had that as well, and I agree with what you're saying. Whereas, like, they did a really good job of, like, you know, like 90% of the time, I was is superb. Like, it's no yeah. problem. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. That was Back to Home, story by Dia and Amina B. And then the art was just by Amina B. We're going to move on to Spade, and that's by Tanuki Spade. So, with all good stories, we begin with a backstory monologue. And uh, so we get in the year 63. There was a fight between five gods. They fought endlessly for many days until one day the fight ended and their powers ruptured from their bodies and scattered all across the world. Uh, now we cut to the year 2995 in a little place called Stardust Village. This is when we're introduced to our MC Sarukashi Spade and he's just chomping on some sushi carrying a big ass bag ripe for adventure. We briefly cut to an incident on Green Apple Island where there is an accidental misfire of some mysterious item from a catapult. Then we cut back to Spade, who has sat down just to enjoy the view when a strange mud ball with like a Celtic symbol plummets towards him, crashing right on top of him. Tragedy strikes when we see Spade's entire bag of sushi has fallen on the sandy beach, but our hero does not lose hope and proceeds to eat it all, like a savage. He then picks up the strange object, contemplating his actions, and then punches it with his Tanuki impact, which was so powerful it caused us to go back into a flashback, from a few hours ago when Spade's friend Jigo was preparing him for his journey to become the world's first legend. We're now back at the present, only to find out that the attack only sent the stone a few feet in front of Spade, and then it begins to glow. Naturally, Sarukashi decides to touch it, the you know potentially irradiated rock, and is immediately zapped and then coated with a yellow aura as the stone disappears. But not being one to skip a beat, he calculates with like a calculator type accuracy where the stone was shot from and then sets his sights on sailing over to this to settle the score. He builds a raft and then proceeds to cross the ocean, but is about to be capsized by a massive tidal wave. So in a panic, he jumps higher than he's ever jumped in uh, before, destroying his raft. And then he lands on the ground, plummeting uh, on his way down. He comes across a plate of sushi on the ground in front of a large creepy tree, but he's immediately captured by like a rope trap. And he poots himself and knocks out immediately. Uh, two hours later, he's awoken by a talking cat named Bazillion Jokasokyo, who begins interrogating Spade about being a Kingsguard, which is a job title that is punishable by death in the eyes of the cat. Spade convinces Bazillion that he's not a Kingsguard, but he's trying to find out who shot a mud ball at him. And this is when we find out that Bazillion uh, has been having these mud balls shot at him by the king ever since he was turned into a cat. Baz, uh, which I'm just going to you know, abbreviate Bazillion, because, uh, you know, we're cool like that. Baz unties Spade and then invites him over for some homemade sushi. And this is when we get a little bit of Baz's backstory, because he begins to cry and reveals that exactly seven years ago today that his father was murdered by the king, which was also a really shitty birthday present, because it's the same day uh, as his father's birthday. The king murdered Baz's father out of jealousy of his powers, and this is when we find out that Baz is actually a girl, and when the murder happened, she was converted over into the cat. Spade offers to send the king flying once he's uh, no longer hungry. After their meal, they head out to Honeycrisp neighborhood to find some clothes for Baz, but they are immediately recognized and captured. 
The king has them jailed with the imposter who caused the misfire of the catapult at the beginning of the story. So it was like a super subtle swipe all the way back. Once in the cell, they meet a Kazatoro purple who offers to help break them out of the cell in exchange for a boat. Spade agrees, but on the condition that he gets to send the king flying first. While explaining to Kazo his purpose in doing so, Kazo realizes he was hit by a Dengen, which is one of the legendary shards of power from the gods, with Spade getting the lightning Dengen of Zeus. Because of this news, he's invigorated, so they decide to bust out of jail, and they use purple spherical soul smash. Psst. As we call it in the biz. And without skipping a beat, Sarakashi zooms over to the king's room and punches him straight in the face with a yellow tanuki spade smash. The use of the newfound powers then causes a mark on his forehead, kind of similar to like Harry Potter. And with their nemesis vanquish, their issues resolved, and Spade's newfound powers, they decide to head out to the port where they are about to basically hijack a massive fucking boat. The end. So, wild ride. Super wild mm -hmm. ride. Um, they they took a, a lesson from my edits for video games and just jump cut the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I I liked like the premise and everything. I just it was it would zoom back and forth to different stories. It, it was kind pretty of crazy. it kind of like reminded me. So art style wise, I thought it was very fun. It was a very yeah. fun uh, like easy going art style. And story wise, mixed with the art, it kind of reminded me very early, like One Piece stuff. Oh like, my thinking, god, yes. Where like Luffy was very goofy and like going mm -hmm. around all the time Always and hungry. just like super powerful and he's just like doing whatever he wants. Um, The other guy, uh, he looked a lot like Zoro <laughs> yes, when he, he first did. met Zoro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, Bazo's um, dad, they said like had red hair and a scar <laughs> yeah. over his eye. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like a, I do agree. I think it's a so tribute. it's three piece, three piece. <laughs> yeah, because we, we already done two we piece. Got two piece, <laughs> but we didn't want to get the copyright infringement, and we didn't want that them to not take That one scene though, seriously. when he punches the king, it reminded me a lot of uh, when Luffy punches the um. What, what are they called? The Sam, do you remember the name where uh, Lu where uh, Hachi gets me shot? About my memory. All right, go ahead. Uh, Hachi Luffy... gets shot, mm -hmm. and then they're on the uh, they're on the island with all the bubbles and stuff, and he. Oh, he hits a celestial dragon. Yes, there we go. the celestial yeah. dragon is what you were looking for. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Sam. I never would have gotten it. You if you do it some, into my head. If you do some great editing, it will look like you called that. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, it, I don't know if it's just like the cat people always reminds me of uh, Happy from like uh, Fairy Tale too. So I thought it was like a combination of the two. But do you remind you of a Tanuki? It did, but he's a cat. Mm -hmm. She's a cat, so yes. I, that's what I was thinking. Yes, he does get called a he a lot. <laughs> so just like... I, I was putting it in my notes. It's like, I know what I'm writing down, but I'm going to keep that reveal yeah. for later, you know? So um, they, they tell you what all the Dengen are. So there's the legendary Dengen, but then they all say there's regular Dengen. So like yeah, you um, could get a shitty one, but then there's the, the I have them like six, five, five really good I, ones. Yeah. Yeah, fire, but it wasn't. They 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 screwed it. They, they said fire lava, so they fucking dicked whoever got fire because they had. Well, not dick. They get superpowers at that point. They mm -hmm. get double superpowers: um, water, wind, earth, and nature. Well, water like water that. is water oh. ice. Water yeah. ice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's like a gum gum fruit. But yeah. Like a mud ball. But like it was weird when they were describing it as like lightning. I get it. Lightning yep. could have been lightning Sign wind, by the way. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's it, true. Uh, the lightning wind was like, okay, standard, standard. Fire, lava, standard. Water, ice, standard. And then there's one that's just nature. But all of those are all nature. So it is, uh, it's heart. Maybe they mean much. earth. Maybe. Like nature, heart. Cause, yeah, because that was kind of, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. yeah, all of those other ones are good. But if I have the nature dingin, I should get all of those. Like, that, like those are all you're, fun you're nature. You're the avatar. You're the avatar. What oh it is. God. It's like all of those are nature. But the way they did say nature, they kind of said it like, oh, and there's also nature. Like, it was like the extra one where it mm -hmm. could be the dickhead mm -hmm. one where it's like, yeah, I'm going around flexing. Listen, maybe the other ones, okay, uh, we go back to Ragnarok. The, the other ones, you could be the most powerful in those, but if you're nature, you're good at them. You're just not as good at them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could use all of them. See. Mm -hmm. And then also you just walk into a fight with somebody with a normal Dengen and you just pretty much say, well, you lost. And what are you going to do I about it? I think they say that did? for all of the legendary ones. If you have the legendary Dengen, you pretty much win against any other regular Dengen. That's sad. 
That's yeah. really sad. <laughs> yeah. But it's like you get a regular Dingen, you think you're really cool until you meet the guy with a legendary Dingen, and then you're going to lose shits all over you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's this dude that just fucking shoves sushi down his face and says Tanuki Punch on everything, and you're just like, why, why do you – you came from an apple village? Yeah. Yes. By the way, me and Sam were talking about it because he was reading it next to me. Um, Stardust Village is not on the map in Green Apple Island, so – Part of me thinks that when he crossed notice. the river or the ocean, that it was just a totally different island that Spade is coming from. But it was nowhere on the map. And on my second read, that's when I found out that um, Kazatora Purple is the guy that launched the Dengen at the beginning. I'm assuming the Dengen was launched as a mud ball, but they found out after the words that there was a Dengen inside of the mud ball. Which just seems like poor calculation on the king's thing. Yeah. Well, well yeah, because like they mentioned calculator to find it. Did it was it Kazator Purple? He mentioned where it's like, yeah, they show up as mud balls. Or, you know, so it's like, why are we firing mud balls then? Like, yeah. if mud, yeah. if mud balls are important, let's not fire mud balls. And what I'm trying to figure out, you know, other than just a really shitty version of like getting TP'd, like, what is a mud ball going to do to a tree? Is it just going to be like, oh wow, that's really irritating. My tree looks like shit. Well, a mud like, ball would still fuck you up if it hit you from a catapult, but I like, there's gotta be stone or something. Like, throw it, rocks. It's gotta like, be some physical, right? It, some, like coconuts. Yeah. Some, but it also feels <laughs> like it's just an inefficient use of their artillery. They could just send a guard if they if they know you where mean to launch shoot. a guard. Well, no, if they <laughs> if they know where to like send the mud ball, they could send an army over there real quick and be like, "Oh, it would just weed him out. He's over here." They've been trying for seven years, Josh. Okay, they they had this to be true. able they, to do. They it. they haven't figured it out yet. Mud balls There's... were the most efficient thing they could figure out in seven years. Aerodynamic. I'm starting to think with this conversation, there is something we are severely missing uh, in this story. <laughs> but it just seems like you know, like. They're incredibly rare, so let's even say like one in a hundred thousand mud balls, you're gonna find a dengen. I'm not gonna fire off a hundred thousand dengen in like or a hundred thousand mud balls and get fucked on the one. Yeah, it feels like if you were in the like um, Willy Wonka universe, you're just taking chocolate bars and eating them in different directions. You're like, I hope one of them's a golden uh, ticket, yeah. but I don't know at this and point. And so, is Bazoo does is that a dengen? Does he, or is it just a power? He just has a power, or she just has a power. <laughs> I, I think feel, she just has a power, right? I feel like it's a curse her dad put on her when he yeah, died. Yeah, because he transferred it. Like, mm-hmm. b- yeah. before he died, he it's transferred like it. It's like Moroku with fucked. the wind tunnel. So she could have, like, a Dengen, but we just don't know yet. Yeah, and then they're clearly they kind of set up a cause for a purple, too, where they're like, oh, well, where'd you come from? Oh, really far. Well, forget it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, so he's probably got some sort of backstory, too. He's probably on the same island that fucking Spade came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would like to know... Uh, Jigo, like the two seconds that he's on there, he's like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out because he says the first letter of something. He wants mm-hmm, to reveal mm-hmm. something. And he's like, just want to let you know there's another O. I'm like, what is an O word? <laughs> I was <laughs> in my brain. Uh, yeah, I could figure it out. Oxymoron. Oxy. Oxycontin. Wait. Ox. There's another ox. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Octopus. We were on such a high note with this. And then we're just going to degrade down into Orgy. an octopus ox. That, Owl. Yep. Ow. <laughs> we're hitting a lot of fucking animals. Good job. Uh, Orange. That's good. Oh. Uh, uh, Oliphant. Orangutan. Ol- Oliphant? <laughs> At what point do we call it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's move on to our last manga. Orochimaru. That was... Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Oh, no. So that was Spade by Tanuki Spade. We're going to move on to the last one of today. It's going to be The Ideal Warrior by Naman Agarwal. Pronounce that name. I can't save you from that one. You fucking nailed it, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I bit my lip I in the so... middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we start off with some dude uh, who we, you know, named Arthur Smith, and he is selecting his successor as The Ideal Warrior. And it's between two people right now. Uh, we find out he chooses a, a young boy named uh, Ryu. We find out that Ryu is actually the son of the first ideal warrior. Um, and he's a gifted fighter. Uh, Zack Silver is believed to be the best uh, fighter, even given the title of the White Executioner for his, you know, his white hair. 
then we meet his friends who aren't you know they're they're all right we got we got a guy named hero a chick named melody and kyoya who's kind of awkward and then just a quick little arthur smith who is the current uh and the second ideal warrior and then finally the story starts with the group uh they're kind of in a town a, a, a quick city they're there on a mission um but immediately shenanigans ensue uh you know there's a little bit of chemistry between two of the guys and it's just always awkward between them um and then there's the one guy who's always hungry it's got to be in every single one uh but immediately zach is just like hey guys we got to kind of carry on with the mission let's let's meet up with the priest they go to the church and they meet the priest who's actually very delighted to see the ideal warrior which i guess is a very famous thing here and he says oh you guys are welcome to stay in in the town a lot of the people would li really like to see you and then they immediately cut him off and they're like hey we can't this is kind of a covert mission we're here to see what these terrorists are up to I immediately uh they're like oh we need a place to stay and stuff so the priest is like hey let me let me call up my homie tell him that you guys are coming over uh you guys can stay there with his kids and everything they'd be delighted to have you they meet the family and they're they're a very sweet couple and they got their kids uh they literally let them have a room they have lunch and then they're like all right you guys can do whatever you want for a bit the whole time uh ryu is just deciding i want to play with the kids and he wants to play planes with his best friend hero and they're just kind of playing around meanwhile zach sits down and talks to the parents and they kind of they're kind of asking him like what what's going to happen what are they going to do and so he's like oh we'll be leaving later today and then might come back tomorrow morning it's kind of one of those things i'd like to uh, point out that the wife is Banging huge <laughs> knockers. <laughs> yes, she is quite voluptuous. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go back and check. I'm like, huh? You guys are welcome. Uh, the f I thought this was super funny. Was uh, you know, everyone's kind of been there in this situation. Where I think his name is Kyoya. Mm -hmm. Uh, is stuck with Melody, and he's just like, holy shit, we're here alone. What do I do? And he's kind of like playing it in his head. I love this part. And he's just like, either I ask her out on a date, that's obvious, or do I make a stupid joke and make things awkward? And he's he he sees uh Ryu in his head. He's just like, mm, so you've chosen option B, my friend. Uh, and immediately right when he's about to like ask her out, I'm assuming the guys barge in and it's this whole thing. Uh, the little kids are like, oh, you guys are slow. Which for some reason they both draw their weapons at each other. Like, it's the rational point of thought. Yeah. Right, uh, Zach walks in. He's like, "Yo, guys, put that shit away. We got a mission to do." And so they all kind of get ready, and then they dip out. They say their goodbyes to the family. It's kind of like a nice little sweet goodbyes. You know, they kind of bonded with the kids and with the family and everything. Uh, and then during this, the the husband gets a call uh, saying that the priest has like got some urgent uh, news or something to report, and he has to head out. So they decide they're going to take their first, uh, they're going to do like watches, you know, like everyone does at night. And of course they pick Zach, who's just kind of watching. And he's like, oh yeah, everything will be fine as long as everyone else wakes up, but no one else woke up. So he's the only one watching. He decides to take a quick glance over at the city and he sees a massacre through this telescope. Like, he, is he just peeking? Into Homeboy the house? was peeking on the fucking wife because she's banging. <laughs> uh straight up sees a massacre like although he doesn't know what's going on uh the priest is kind of involved in a cult and he has that whole family killed and he's like don't worry he's like i hope your family you know will be at peace uh thank you for worshiping kind of stuff he's like you guys were necessary sacrifices to to my cause zach decides oh i'm not gonna tell anybody i'm just gonna report this in the morning he's like the mission has to be the first, like the main objective. I can't tell Ryu about this. So in the morning, he decides to to like phone it in and give his report. But Ryu overhears, which immediately sends our main character into a very I don't know if it's like a downward spiral, more like a rage. And he's upset, and so he's like, "Zach, you're in charge. I want you guys to go finish the mission. I'll be back. I'm gonna go slaughter that priest." So as he takes off. He doesn't realize that Zach actually went with him, and then he kind of just left the trio alone to kind of take care of things. So we cut to the trio, and they're kind of overlooking some rocks, and they're like, okay, they're the terrorists. They're kind of setting up some weird stuff. Let's hope they're not doing anything illegal. So our boy jumps out, and he's just like, hey, what up, guys? Hope you're not doing anything illegal over here. I want to say they're scientists. I'm not really sure. They don't really look like the combat type of guys. They turn around, and they're like, yo, let's get... Let's get some help out here. So they 
they send some like security to come take him out, but the trio is way too powerful and not takes him out until they get to level two and this dude with a giant hammer comes out and just beats them. Just yep. like, yeah, just straight up wrecks them to the point where it's like I, they're pretty all bloody and they're all on the ground and at one point you just see Hero going like, fuck, is this how I'm gonna die? Cut back to Ryu and how he's already at the priest. I think it's the priest. And he's pretty much just beating him and about ready to execute him in front of everyone. Uh, right before he does that, Zack comes in and stops him from doing this. And the whole time, the priest is kind of just yelling like, oh, no, you've you've ruined everything. My sacrifices, they're all good. You know, how dare you so, like soil them? It's like, so the, 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 the crowd just kind of starts chanting. They're like, oh, more sacrifices, more sacrifices, which is like, he just brainwashed him. Like, I don't know what the hell happened. And Ryu's like, oh, everybody better shut up or I'll burn the city down. Uh, cut back to Hiro, who's pretty much on his, like, dying breath. Just like, damn, I never thought I'd end like this. I just wanted to be very much like my friend Ryu. And before he's about to get killed, the dude just gets chopped up. And we find out it's uh, Ryu, who somehow flash stepped back over there. So now the team is together, and Ryu kind of just get gives the order saying like hey zach go after this car it's taking off meanwhile i'll send melody and kyoya to like not let anyone in or out of the city like until we get there we'll we'll me and hero will clean up everything split the party best best thing to do and as that happens they kind of find out that they're building some kind of like machine inside and outside of the city and then you find out that they have powers yeah shin energy yep. and then he kind of like Earth bends a giant wall around the area. Meanwhile, t- the people who are trying to get away, Zach chases after them. And then he's the one that kind of finds out everything that's going on between all of this. And it starts to get really weird for- here for me. Like, this is <laughs> where I got a little confused. Let's that's hear it. In. <laughs> all right. I don't understand this. They, they, cr- they use it. Like, whatever happens, they can't really stop what's happening. So, Melody kind of like already beaten and stuff decides that she's going to shatter this thing. Keep on going because I have no fucking idea. So, go ahead. What happened? Okay. I read this like five times. I'm sorry. I'm having such a hard time with this one. Um, But it's like everyone kind of gets possessed in a way. And then Kyoya kind of. I think it's Kyoya. Kyoya turns on them. Uh, but eventually, Ryu kind of comes back and sees that the slaughter, like, he's even like, oh, he breaks through the wall. He's like, everything smells kind of like rotten meat and stuff. So far, so good, man. It's just... <laughs> I, uh, but everyone's kind of just... I'm sorry. It's just... This This is the only part that I couldn't keep up with. You and three got... both. Uh, us yeah sorry. I, I tried so hard but um so everyone's just kind of there and they're talking about sacrifices uh that their friends were actual sacrifices through all of this which is kind of sad because i was like oh i kind of like the other two characters other three three characters You're uh welcome but he ends up giving a really crazy motivational speech here uh and the whole time you're kind of seeing this through zach's eyes and he kind of encourages people to kind of I don't know, he makes him laugh, he makes him cry, all of that stuff. And the whole time he's like, oh, now I see why you've become the ideal warrior. The guy that was about to burn an entire city down. (laughs) Their city that, you know, with all the possessed people and stuff. Yo, his speech was not that good, okay? I I read his speech, and I don't know when people started laughing and crying in that speech. But I, I think at one point we could all agree. Uh, I think it's because story, he didn't burn down the city. It, that mm-hmm. could have been. Mm-hmm. But the story went off the fucking rails. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was like, I was like, oh, it's, it's totally cool. It's totally got me where it's going. You split the party. Something crazy is going to happen. All this and that. And then I was just like, huh? That's the end, right? Like, just so we're yeah. 100% yeah, so everybody says, else knows. So, that's that's yeah, yeah. it. The three side characters all die. The girl, like, dies trying to, like, collapse the building. Ryoya or whatever goes feral, stabs Hero, or slashes Hero. Then I think he, he slashes Zach, him, and he dies. And then Zach kills 
uh, Feral Rioya or whatever. And then your boy, the ideal hero, just chimes in like, well, I'm taking credit for this. And... <laughs> he, he literally just comes in and is just like, he, well, I'm the like boss. He, he goes, I'm your god. It's like, yeah! I, I will, you guys worship me. I ask for nothing, which good on you, but I'm your god now. It's like, okay, wow. Ooh. Well, it wasn't just that. He came in and shat on their god. You know, he <laughs> yeah. could have been a really yes. nice guy. He just needed human blood to survive. I so they they said something about gaslighting, like they were using some form of gas to control the people, right? So that's, that's what why the two were... building things that they were erecting were supposed to do. It would like gaslight everybody, and then everyone would kind of just be a zombie. I think. I have no idea. There was a weird ulterior motive somewhere in there. Listen, I, let me tell you, I was on board. I liked the part where they w- showed up to the city. That was like classic, like kind of like adventure mm-hmm. action shonen thing. Mm-hmm. I liked them meeting the priest. I liked them going to hang out with the family. I thought the comedy bits were really good. Like with the it's very uh, full metal alchemisty. Right yeah, there. it was good. It was really good. But the moment it kicked off, like I even liked the part where he's taking him out and he sees the murder and the massacre. The mm-hmm. moment it kicks off, I'm just like, I was so lost. I yeah. was so so lost. Either like even just down to my normal complaint of I can't understand what's going on in the action parts was mega in this. I had no yeah. idea. I just. I- Good on I, you for getting to that part, because I was confused through the whole story. Jose's explanation of the story made more sense to me than <laughs> I read it I three read times it. just to make sure. I was like, huh, okay, how am yeah, I going to make this Yeah, when you were going, Jose, I was like, wow, wow, because I yeah. got that reading. It's like, man, God, that wasn't mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, well, the first time I read it, I was like, okay, I'm a little confused. Maybe I went too fast, so I decided to go back again. I'm like, okay, it's kind of making sense now. Third time around, I'm like, it's making sense up until this part. I I just found out that the two main characters were playing airplane with the kids. Oh yeah, see I didn't get that the until the, the second time. time. I like the I part was... where they 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 pull the weapons on each other. The kids like mimic it too. Yeah, yeah. that they're yeah. doing. It. I was like, oh, I was like, I like that part. And, and then they die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, Which they I like that part like... too. And it's like, oh. but then Sam it just goes off the rails off after the that. I was like, man, it, this is crazy. It got mega dark, and it was like, I I want it. I feel like it could have been really cool. Like it could have gotten really dark, and I think it would have gone like Goblin Slayer levels, where it's like, yeah, we're cool first episode, and then shit goes off the fucking rails, and you're like, oh god, this is murder. But it just see, I like I like the setup and everything that was mm-hmm. introduced all the way. Uh, if there would have been maybe like a small scuffle or just something to kind of introduce that the main character is very powerful I and stuff and like... then lead into that whole mm-hmm. giant like oh this is what i'm gonna do and take care of this then i'd be okay with it like if they had just ended it like i just uh, feel like there were that. some parts of it where i i've done this before like old school like writing essays or like you know whatever in your mind you get what's going on on the page yeah. But, like, if I was to show that to someone else, like, if I'm drawing a manga and it's like, yeah, that looks good. But then I show it to Josh and he's like, yeah, I got lost here because, yeah. like, I have the image in my mind, but, like, we don't have that image. So, like, looking at it, it's like, oh, I think that might have happened. Like, the part where, um, I don't know, the main just character, like a passive he just shows up out of nowhere after, like, mm-hmm. beating on the priest. I was like, I don't know. He flashed I, that, dude. I don't know yeah. when that happened. It was like, okay. It's like I was real confused, and it was like, hey, so I think there were just some parts where I feel like in his, the the author, his, her mind, it made sense to them. To me reading it, I was like, oh, I feel like we missed a panel or something. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I think with, like, Spade, it was intentionally, like, because I was thinking there was parts where they just yeeted into a different mm-hmm. area. But that's, like, an intentionally funny, like, uplifting mm-hmm. kind of thing. This went serious out of nowhere, so everything had, uh, like, purpose. There was, like, a motive for everything. And if you didn't get that immediately off, it was, like, what just happened? I didn't get that. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it was cool. I liked it. I it could have been, like, really good. I-, I feel like they had a gist, and they just needed to fill in more plot lines, but they were also at the 54-page limit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... And I feel like the payoff at the end was a little um, unearned. Like like yeah. I like I was memeing on his speech was not that good. He lost uh, more than half of his party. Yeah, and then like oh, it doesn't was... make sense for Zach that didn't be like, oh, I get why he's the ideal warrior now. It's like I'd be like, why the fuck is this guy the ideal warrior? Zach gets stabbed. <laughs> yeah, gets yeah stabbed. He, does. he was hard carrying like most yeah. of it, and it's like mm-hmm. and then he does one speech at the end. He's like, oh, I get it. It's like no, I don't get it. Hello. 
I was hoping his dad would show up and just like fucking wreck face, but no, we got murder friends, and it was it was really painful to watch. So, I, li- I like one. those friends. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did too. Which is crazy that they killed him off. I was like, oh, okay, cool. But, I mean, you like that stuff, Sam? Mm-hmm, I do. Yeah. If I could have understood what was going on. Yeah, I think it, if they had, I don't even know. I don't know what they would have to do. I feel like they would have to like be really concise on a lot of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. just clean it up, but yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about all three of them together and figure out which one we like the best. Just a quick recap. We did Back to Home, that story by Dia and Amina B, and then the art, just Amina B. Then we did Spade, and that's by Tanuki Spade. And then we did The Ideal Warrior, and that's by Naman uh, Agarwal. God, I cannot pronounce that last name. Uh, Josh, which one did you like the most and why? Um, So I'm going to have to have it between Spade and Back to Home. Um, I really liked The Ideal Warrior if it had delivered on everything and was a little bit more clear. But at the end of the day, it's just it went off the rails. Spade, I would prefer to see that as an anime. I didn't like reading it as much as like when I was reading Back to Home. It was a very like... I think you introed it. It's a repeated story. It's very, it's a used concept. So I felt very comfortable and there wasn't a whole lot of like risks taken. Um, but I would say overall, like the artwork was really good. The story was cohesive. So I'm probably going to go with Back to Home. Okay. Jose? Ideal Warrior and Spade are both, you know, shit I would go straight for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have picked Ideal Warrior if the ending wasn't so gun ho at the end yeah uh, if that was just fleshed out a tiny bit or just even less less of the chaoticness with maybe just one friend dying i would have been okay with that mm-hmm. uh spade remind me a lot of like uh the funny times of one piece and everything just uh so that was a lot of fun and then but i feel like back to home kind of mat like mat like was at the right level of what the, the contest was so Are you I, picking back uh, home? yeah i'm going back to home as well all right, well, fuck you both. Spade was the best one, dude. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Spade was I, so much better. I just maybe it's because I'm I've never been like a huge fan of One Piece, so that like style of artwork and like that kind of like random happy go lucky stuff is just not my my vibe. It was so I good. I was like, oh, this is fun. This is a fun adventure. It's like let's go do a thing, and then they get captured, and then they punch the king in the face. I was like, oh, yay, yay. Well, some <laughs> of us had some of us had to write notes for it, and they were having a real t- tough time struggling trying to fucking remember everything that happened. <laughs> so I just feel like I could points. turn that on and just like like yeah, this is fun. Like I, yeah. I'm having a good time. I, I agree with that, but yeah, I just back to home was like. And that bitch a Sally's a traitor, so I don't even want to talk about Sally. Uh, <laughs> Sally fucking saved the world. Or she set it up and then saved the world. Yeah, that's our, like... that's our side of yeah, that's our <laughs> yeah. side of the coin. Yeah, wait till I re- re- release my side of back to home, like the three little pigs book from the wolf side of the story. <laughs> so I can't wait to see that episode on the History Channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, congratulations, uh, Back to Home. You win. You're the uh, winner for this week. But so congratulations to Dia and Amina B. You've been the chosen victor. So clap, clap, clap. Stay woo. tuned because we will have one more episode of Regular Jump Tezuka. And then after that, we should be picking our grand winners, plural. Uh, I think we're doing, do we decide top five? We're going to yep. do top five and... Yep. Uh, from all the ones that we read so far and picked as our winners, we will pick the top five out of those. And there are actually quite a few. So check out the end screen if you want to see the ones that we picked as the winner. We have one more episode, which we'll probably just wildcard it. We'll just pick whatever we want at that point because we're uh, pretty much close to done on viewer submissions. So we'll just yeah. pick whatever. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe on the video if you did like it. We will probably be back at some point with more uh reviews we always Contest do mangaku yeah. which is a monthly manga book club that we review stuff with we have some requests to go back to like tokyo revengers and eden zero Ooh, so we might yeah. swing back around to those and do more reviews of that stuff so there'll be more reviews no matter what's going on even after the tezuka stuff ends so be sure to subscribe we'll always have more for you guys that's all thanks for watching have a good one see you next time <laughs>